All right, so now my material looks like this. I've got a texture coordinate that grabs the texture coordinate. I'm multiplying it by the value of my choosing. And then those coordinates are going out into the UV input of each of the texture samples so that they all are being changed at the same time. And then those values drive the shader here on the right. But we can use this adjustment idea here in some other places. So perhaps we would like the roughness uh, to be adjustable. So we can, uh, holding Alt, I can left click and that's gonna break that chain. I can uh, click, hold Shift, and then I can Control D to duplicate. And I can drag those over here. I'm gonna plug the RGB value there and then the output there into roughness. So now we've got some increased roughness. So I can see at this point, I'm instead of uh, the, the roughness values that comes out here, I'm multiplying those values by 2.5. And we can see that that makes my tile uh, a little less shiny and a little less reflective to light. So we can have some additional control over the roughness value. Let me grab all of these and just uh, left mouse click, drag them over just a bit. And that's still our metallic value there. I could also use this multiply uh, trick to change the color tint. So I'm going to hold down three and bring in another constant uh, <clears throat> constant three vector, which will let us select a color. Now, as a default value, I want it to be set to one. So I want to just turn this value all the way up and make sure that my RGB values are all set to one. So when I load in a new texture, no change is going to happen to it. I'll be seeing the texture as it is. And then if I want to add a color tint, I can come up here. So uh, click, hold down shift, click again, control D to make a copy. And we'll bring that up here. I actually don't need that one because I'm not going to use that value. I'm going to use this one. So we'll plug that into A. If I hold control, I can pull it out and just move it someplace else. And I can move that into the base color. So I've got the tint is set to one right now. So it's a value of one. So it's not making any change. You can see desert scene, no change. But if I double click in here and instead push this a little bit towards the greenish, and then hit OK. We can now see that we're getting a green tint. So I can hit Apply, go back to the desert scene, green tint. Now, obviously, that looks horrible. So let's reset that back to zero. There we go. We can also uh, drive our normal values, but we can't quite use the multiply node uh, just due to the way that the normal map works. So we will use the flatten normal node, flatten, flatten normal. And again, holding control, I can unplug and replug in into the normal. I'm gonna hold down one and add a constant value because that's what it's gonna ask for here to adjust the flatness. And I'll plug this into the normal map. And we'll hit apply, go to our scene and see that we've got uh, no change. So now if I take this value and turn it to minus one, and hit apply, you can see that it's increased. It's it's made that, uh, that normal uh, a little bit more severe, uh, a little bit more noticeable. Uh, it's added some depth to it. If I went back and did that ex uh, to the extreme to minus five, we can see that, that that it even starts to, oh, sorry, desert scene. It, it uh, starts to really, you know, pull that in. And from a distance, you know, it's much more noticeable and pronounced. And it even starts to, to make some of the edges of the tile start to crack. So we can control our normal values that way. I'm going to reset that back to zero uh, to have the default value. All right, and that's our material so far.